Hi everyone, welcome to Liquid Brain. So this is the step after differential expression analysis. Um, we will do something called functional annotation. And this can be done using two different methods, either over-representation analysis or gene tag enrichment analysis. In this video, I'm going to talk about the concept of the analysis, how the tools work. So by the end of the video, you should be able to know how to interpret the result and how to prepare all the fancy figures from this enrichment analysis. So this is all the non gene in the sample. Uh, red is one sample and the other sample is in blue. Well, while mixing them together, we can compare and get the so-called DDG differential express gene. And from there, uh, we can try to extract the DDG and get the idea what what are the functional terms that enrich in this DG. This is how over representation analysis works. They try to understand uh, the function that enrich in DG by comparing with all the known genes in the species. So for example, we know that the uh, certain gene in this species is enriched in functional group 1, group 2, and so on. And then we map this gene set in the GGG and we got we can get a table like this. So for example, in functional group 1, they are having 35 genes over all the known genes in species, which is 15,000 genes. And then there are 30 genes in 900 DGGs. So are they over represented here? Yes, that's quite likely. And then th there are 75 genes and which in this functional group 2, but we have only 2 genes in DG. So um, by ratio, we can see that it's not really likely uh, that functional group 2 is, is at least in this DG. So over representation analysis kind of captured the idea by this mathematical model uh, called hypergeometric testing. So that is a long jargonized definition, but in short, they just try to get the number of the gene set in the sample versus the number of the gene set in the organism based on this mathematical model. They calculate the probability of this gene set in the DG as compared to the probability of this gene set in the species. And from there, uh, they can get the significant level using the statistical test. Uh, and here, they use one-sided feature and depth test. So this is why they want you to put in the, the data like this. So first, we just need a gene name of the DG. Uh, of your subset of the DG, and then you used to tell them all the known genes in the sample which is correspond to this universe and also we have to tell them what are the species of the sample so from that they will undergo the enrichment analysis using this ORA method you can see that the big limitation is there's no standard way to define what is the subset of the DEG. So for some people, they would say maybe uh, DEG with block 2 full chain value more than 1 or more than 2 or with p value lower than 0 0.05. In this way, we will cut no other G that might have smaller changes but with significant effect. That's why there is the something called gene tag enrichment analysis. Instead of just pick up the subset of the DG, they get all the known genes in the samples. And then they also try to do an extra step to get the enrichment score based on their own calculation. So this is like for each of the gene set, uh, they will assign the score, enrichment score, and we will know the p-value to know significant or not, and also correct it for multiple tests. Okay, so we will need a set of the gene list that is fit in with the log 2 full change value. And then we have to range the full change value from the highest to the lowest. Um, the top list here will be more co correlated with the phenotype A, and the bottom part will be more correlated with phenotype B. So from there, they kind of calculate the enrichment score by doing the so-called running sum statistic which means that it let's say a gene present in the gene set at the score here uh, it let's say that's not really present they will try to deduct so they go down and there is the which should pick where there is the maximum deviation from zero and this is what they set it as the enrichment score so in this example 
the enrichment score is happen at the left hand side of the enrichment plot that means this is the so called within each subject that highly enriched in this pathway so this is how they do they play a lot with the enrichment score so we input the gene list and then they will uh, excite the enrichment score for each functional term so it's still not enough so there's still a probability that the gene list might present in the particular gene set without the influence of the log 2 function value which means that in last time we not ranking them from the highest to the lowest they still might have relatively similar enrichment score so in order to eliminate this type of the um, assumption uh, they also try to do something called permutation test that means that randomly rank the phenotype gene that uh, something like this just randomly rank it for 1000 times by default and from there they try to assign the random enrichment score and now we have the actual enrichment result and also the random enrichment result time 1000 times and this enables us to ask a question are the width inside the gene set significantly high or low compared to the width in a random gene set of the same size so we we'll try to apply the statistical test the so-called weighted Kolmogorov-Smirnov test so this is the KS test to find the differences in the cumulative distribution and from there they will obtain the so-called nominal p-value that for us to estimate the significant level Okay, so now we have the enrichment score and we have the p-value but remember this is just for the one single functional term so we need to get the normalized enrichment score for us to compare the analysis result across the gene set like the gene set in gene ontology that must be more than one right so we have to get this normalized enrichment score so uh, it would be something that uh, the actual enrichment score uh, divided by the mean of the enrichment score against all permutation of the data set. After that, we also will calculate the first discovery rate uh, in order to adjust uh, for multiple hypothesis testing and it is the way to control the first positive in the multiple testing. Okay, so this is how gene set enrichment analysis do. We get the normalized enrichment score and we get the adjusted p-value. We obtain the normalized enrichment score to try to rank the enrichment terms in your gene list. And then we try to use the adjusted p-value to, to determine whether the enrichment is significant or not. Okay, so at this moment, maybe you have already clear that what are the difference between these two analysis. For over representation analysis, we use the subset of genes that belong to the DEGs, and from there we test whether a large portion of DEG are present in the functional terms or not. And for the gene set enrichment analysis, we try to get the gene list. Uh, that have been ranked according to their log 2 function value and from there we try to find out the significant and rich gene set which is the functional terms based on the width and ranking of the gene rich so this is all can be done by using the cluster profiler in R so um, maybe let's have a look on how to prepare the input data we need the result from the differential expression analysis it can be uh, any type of the method like dc2 lima hr um, but here i'm showcase one that it come from the jewel package which is to analyze the um the single cell rna seed data so in that jewel package there's something called fun five marker function uh, like five marker five all markers or five concern marker they are common purpose is to find the differential express gene within your customized sample comparison so let's say i want to compare the tp53 high population versus tp53 low population in the single cell data set and then from there we will obtain uh, the the result like this which is very similar with other type the differential expression analysis and we will have the gene list that uh, we will have the we will get the deg uh, which is like here so for the over representative test uh, we will just get a subset of this gene based on the work to function value or the p-value 
um, from there we can kind of like uh, run the enrich goal and which kit in the cluster profiler uh, package and also we can try to get the gene list by combining the log2 function value and the gene this is to use in the gene set enrichment analysis um, and in cluster profiler the function name called uh, gc go gc kit or gc so this is the thing we don't really able to just use the gene name directly we have to convert them into another identifier which is called entrust gene id in order to convert it there's a very useful library called biomax and we can try to extract the identifier that we want and merge them into your marker list and now we will have the and that gene ID correspond to your differential expression result. Okay, and now what we need will be the list of the entrust gene ID, uh, which is useful for the overall representative analysis, and then also together with the uh, log2 function value, you can get uh, the gene list that uh, for the gene set enrichment analysis. And the secondly, we need to know uh, what type of the biological database we want to use. Commonly, uh, we use something called gene ontology that have three big categories, cellular component, biological process, molecular function. Or you can try to just map with the Cape Pathway database, which is the database platform for all the up-to-date pathway analysis. So like they recently they have the latest new pathway coronavirus disease and then you can also map with the other popular database called molecular signature database which comprise of like uh, eight different gene set for us and of course there are still a lot of other biological database that implemented in the cluster profile or you can also try to create your own database okay so with the input data and with database you want to use we can run the analysis for overall representation analysis this is the function and we will able to get the result like this will be a list of the gene set that enrich in your input gene so for example for the first one there's there are four genes in your 45 input genes that correspond to the first pathway term uh, in comparison to the BG ratio, which means uh, in the species, they should be having 89 genes over 8,937 uh, genes in your overall species that correspond to this pathway. Uh, so this analysis will compare the ratio and calculate the p-value to estimate the significant level and we will look into the adjusted p-value in a way to control the post recovery rate. Uh, by using the gene ratio and the adjusted p-value, we can try to plot something like a uh, bug plot or we can use the geo plot package in R to create something fancy like this. This is a circular pathway plot. This is normally to showcase uh, the log2 functions of your input gene and the relationship with the selected k pathway. And then for the gene set enrichment analysis, they will require the gene list, which is like the range log2 function value and also the name of your gene name. And then they also require your species name and mean and max to exercise are those for the statistical analysis. So by default, they will kind of ignore the gene set with less than 10 genes and ignore those uh, gene set with more than 500 genes in order to preserve the uh, statistical power and then uh, we will obtain the result like this so you will have a list of the functional term and we will look into the normalized enrichment score and adjust the p-value to visualize the enrichment result yeah so we can draw the gc plot in this way and also we can get the rich plot so which plot is for us to visualize what are the functional terms that positively correlated or negatively correlated with your um, gene list. Okay, so this is how cluster profiler able to do uh, for these two types of the analysis. Uh, you can also kind of to visualize them into other ways like category network plot, uh, very fancy, 
uh, email plot is to uh, get the each and dot the interaction among the gene list and also dot plot, uh, update plot, and hit plot. So all these things will be demonstrated in the tutorial book that where they have a very user friendly step by step tutorial to demonstrate how we can use the cluster profiler for the enrichment analysis. So this is also why I don't really showcase in my R studio because I think you could uh, follow the tutorial book easily. So let's come back to this. Okay, so a, a brief summary is for over representation analysis, we use a subset of DEG. Um, this is a quick and easy way to understand the functional annotation, but the limitation is they can't ignore other genes that not belong to the subset, which might be, have smaller changes but with coordinated effect. And the gene set enrichment analysis is to analyze all the genes in the samples that put on weight on the correlation with the phenotype by ranking them with log 2 functions and then evaluate with the enrichment score and we can see that this is a better enrichment analysis but we have to be careful to deal with the statistical parameter in a way to control the false, false discovery rate and just have to bear in mind that these two analyses are just a way to predict the functional enrichment in your gene list but you have to go through a validation experiment uh, the web lab to really determine their functional characteristic so these two analyses can be done easily using cluster profiler package in R and by knowing the concept of the over representation analysis as well as the gene set enrichment analysis, we able to get the functional annotation analysis against the known biological database. But this is not just limit here. We can also uh, try to analyze the leading each group. And also, there's another interesting trend is you can use the gene set enrichment analysis using your own data. So it is especially useful, for example, if you want to test if your if your cultured cell is similar with the primary cell from the patient or maybe you want to compare your set of the sample is it similar with the sample set of other omic data so this is something you can do using the GC analysis and lastly we also can do core expression clustering uh, which is something we will use uh, WGCNA uh, to get the gene set within the cluster and from there we try to analyze what is enriched within. So that's all for my sharing today. I hope you have learned something and thanks for watching and I will see you next time.